Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In the previous lesson, we made a lot of progress in wiring up a new data model to the main page .xaml. And now we need to focus on the layout of the data template themselves in our long list selectors. Uh, we're going to want to tweak each instance of sound data so that they resemble tiles instead of rows the way that they are right now. So if we compare our original drawings in our low-tech mock-up uh, with the current state of the, uh, of the app's UI, the layout isn't quite right and that's what we're going to remedy in this lesson. Okay, so what we're going to do is modify, our game plan is to modify the long list selector to utilize grid layout mode instead of what we're using now which is the default I think it's just called row layout okay and then we're gonna completely rework the layout of each data template so that it more class uh, closely resembles a, a tile instead of a row all right and since we need five or six of these pivot items each with their own long list selector it doesn't make sense to keep defining them like we've done here with just big sections of XAML code. Uh, instead, we're going to abstract them out into a centralized template that can be reused by all of the long list selectors in our main page.xaml. It'll save a lot of space as we visually peruse and we can make change to, uh, to one of the templates and it'll modify uh, all of them that use that, uh, that template. We'll, I'll show you what that means here in just a minute. Okay, so basically the long list selector supports a layout mode property that we're currently not setting because we're just using the default. It accepts an enumeration of either list, which is the default, or grid. By setting the layout mode to grid, and then setting a cell size in terms of width and height and pixels, we can quickly change the appearance of the long list selector. And it'll look a lot like what we're trying to get at here in our low tech mockup. So let's uh, go here to our animals pivot item. And what we wanna do is below where we've defined our item source, we're gonna set the layout mode equal to grid and then we're going to set the grid cell size equal to 150 by 150, all right? And so now you can see uh, that here our, uh, our long list selector data template has changed significantly. All we really did though was change the layout mode from list to grid. All right, so next we want to modify what's inside of this data template to match our desired layout. So what I want to do here is I'm going to highlight everything inside that has to go. We're going to basically remove everything inside of the data template. The stack panel with the two text blocks got to go. And then I'm going to start over with a grid control uh, inside of each cell. So here we go with the grid. And inside of the grid, uh, we're going to create a stack panel and the stack panel will have inside of it a text block. And tell you what we're gonna do here. We're gonna do a self-enclosing uh, tag, and we're gonna set the text equal to, and we'll set the binding up so we can see the title attribute. All right, very good. So far, so good. Hey, uh, let's go ahead and change the background of this grid to use whatever the uh, whatever the user has selected as their accent color for the phone. Like in my case, it's the yellow because I got the yellow phone. But if somebody had the red phone version of this, or just set it up in their in their on their phone's properties, we want to use what they've used. So what do we do? We use a static resource, one of the uh, one of the the uh, the built-in templates uh, themes that are available. So static resource, and we want the phone accent brush here and so in this case since it's set up in our device settings to be uh, red we see a big red grid awesome okay so the next thing I want to do is I want to move this uh, t this text block to the bottom and also let's see if I can get out of this view it's it's butted up against the the left hand side and I suspect it'll be butted up against the bottom too when we move it down and so I'm gonna want to add some margin space around there so let's start by moving it to the bottom and I'm gonna go uh, to the stack panel and I'm gonna set its vertical alignment to the bottom okay so that's a good first step now I want to add uh, to the text block itself we're gonna add some margin and I'm gonna add it to starting on the the left hand side working my way around 
six pixels and then zero top, zero right, and then six pixels to the bottom. And so now it has moved that, as you can see nicely, uh, just a few pixels to give it a little bit of breathing room. Great. Okay, and so the next thing I wanna do is, I wanna, uh, that if you look on the, um, the original drawing that I had, we had a little play button in the upper, upper right hand corner uh, to indicate that it's, it's clickable. And so it gives the user some visual idea that you should be able to click on this and it will play a sound. And so what we wanna do is use this little icon here. Let's find it in our assets, app bar, uh, play and as I hover over it, you can see it's translucent uh, meaning that the, there will be no background color to it which is good because we want the red to shine through or the yellow or whatever the accent brush is but uh, it'll have a little um, triangle on the top so uh, and I'm gonna add an inner grid and then set its vertical alignment to the top and its horizontal alignment to the right so that I get it up here in this upper right hand corner uh, and the play.png is just an arrow, but I want there to be a circle around it as well. So I guess what I could do is go back to the drawing board and rework that image and add a circle around it. But, you know, that's going to take me some time to relaunch. I think it'd be a simple solution just to add that ellipse, that circle in XAML around that image. And so that's what we'll set out to do now. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this. Let's move this over a little bit. And inside of this grid, I want to create another grid. And I'm going to set its vertical alignment to the top. And I'm going to set its horizontal alignment equal to the right. And it's going to be pretty small. So I want the width and height to be pretty tiny. Uh, 40 pixels should do it. So the width and the height of the grid will be 40 by 40 and uh, I'm gonna come back I know I'm gonna add a margin to it in a little bit what I want to do first is to add the uh, the image and so I'm gonna create an image element and set its source equal to assets slash app bar slash play dot PNG and then we'll go ahead and close that out and so now you can see the little arrow in the upper right hand corner great and then the next thing I want to do is put an ellipse around it. So let's start with an ellipse element. And I'm going to set the stroke equal to uh, static resource phone foreground brush. Great. And then I'm also, here, let's just close it off and we can see it's, so we see a white line around it or, or maybe a gray line, I'm not sure which. Uh, but the, the, if we were to kind of, let's get into this a little closer here. Uh, you can see that that line is, that stroke around it's not so pronounced. So what we'll wanna do is increase the thickness of that stroke. So, We'll set the stroke thickness attribute equal to three, and now it's much thicker. And that looks pretty nice, great. But it's also butted up against the top and right hand side. So what I wanna do is add a margin uh, for this little grid that contains my ellipse and my image. So underneath the height attribute, I'm gonna add a margin of um, zero to the left, six to the top, six to the right and then zero to the bottom and that should push it out away just enough great looks awesome okay so these changes make each tile look close to what i had originally envisioned in my low-tech mock-up and now we need to apply this to the other pivot items data template as well uh, for example cartoons and the other ones we'll create so um you know, in the previous lesson, we saw the behavior of the XAML designer. If we put our mouse cursor in this, uh, let's move this down a little bit, 30%, there we go. If we put our mouse cursor in a different pivot item, it will display it in the, um, in the visual editor as opposed to uh, the other item. So we can select back and forth and see the different ways that these, uh, that these appear, uh, the different pivot items. So instead of 
copying and pasting this entire data template from here into here, um, what I would prefer to do is define the data template that I'm going to use at a as a page level resource. Uh, and so, you know, you should recall this from what we did earlier. What I'm going to do is go to the phone phone application page dot resources and create a resources section for this page. And next, what I want to do is I'm going to cut and paste this template here this data template out of here and I'm going to paste it into this resources section okay and let's clean some of these lines up now we're getting all these blue squigglies and we'll fix that here in just a second the reason why we're getting these blue squigglies I think is that we're going to need to add a key attribute and so this key attribute is like a name it'll allow me to reference this data template uh, from the rest of the page when I need it. In fact, I think what I did wrong is I need the entire data template. So let's go ahead and copy this out. And put this here. There we go. And then we're going to need to close that up too. So let's go slash data template like so. And then just for safekeeping, I'm going to need to move some things in a little bit. Yeah. Right, that looks good and we're gonna to want to move this all in as well like so okay indentation looks good now I'm happy with that and um, we're gonna to need to give this data template a key so X key equals sound tile data template great okay now I just need to reference that key that we just created uh, the sound tile data template in my long list selectors item template property like so. In fact, I don't need this property element syntax anymore. We're just gonna get rid of all that. Instead, we're going to go item template and then static resource sound tile data template like that. Great. And now you can see that when I made that change and I set that resource back as, uh, set it to the item template attribute, uh, we got our um, our sample data to show up again in the visual designer so we're on the right track here and so what I want to do is repeat this process for the second item uh, the second pivot item I'm going to delete this whole item template like so and what I'm going to do instead is actually I'm just going to go ahead and copy this whole long list data selector since we changed the layout mode some other things Let's go ahead and blow it all away and start over. And this time we're going to change it from animals to cartoons. Like so. Okay. Very cool. And now you can see the impact that it's had. Let's go control A. Let's go um, like 66% there. You can see that we have successfully used this sound tile data template in both pivot items. But now that we're looking at an item that has more than one tile, we can see that we, we have a new issue that pops up. Uh, the two tiles are butted up right next to each other. So why didn't I notice this before? Simply because we just had one item. All right. Uh, clearly we're going to need to remedy this because it just doesn't look right and as a result it might confuse the user. They might not see a, two distinct tiles there but just one bar of red uh, or whatever the phone accent brush color that they chose. So to remedy this what I want to do is add a margin to the bottom right of each grid that defines the boundaries for uh, each data item. So let's go back up to our resources here and what I want to do is add a margin to this topmost grid. So here we go, margin equals, and we'll say zero to the left, zero to the top, but 12 to the right and 12 to the bottom. And now when I go to the second item, you can see we get that nice separation. There's some black color between the reds. Awesome. 
Okay, so the last task is now to create pivot items for each of the other data groups in that I'm going to support in my app, including taunts, warnings, and then custom sounds. So what I'm going to do is merely just take these pivot items, this pivot item here, and I'm going to control C to copy it, and I'm going to paste it three times. And then what I want to do is change each of these. So like for example, taunts and taunts. And the next one we'll do uh, warnings and warnings. And then finally we'll do um, Whoops, this should be warnings here. And then we'll do custom sounds here. And custom sounds. Like so. Okay, so I've warned you before about the dangers of copying and pasting uh, code. There's a chance you'll forget to modify one little bit of data that makes each pasted item a little bit different. So pay attention to the details. Make sure that you're modifying uh, each pasted item in two spots. You can see what, what happened to me when I forgot that. Um, change it here at, for the header and for the item source bindings. All right. Okay, so to recap, the big takeaway from this lesson was how to style the long list selector by changing the layout mode from uh, list to grid uh, and then setting the various tile sizes uh, using the, uh, the grid cell size attribute as well. Uh, we also learned how we can take things like data templates and define them at a higher level here as page resources and then be able to use them throughout the, uh, the rest of the page. We also learned how to use an image control like we used here and then how to add simple shapes like ellipses to enhance the visual design. Uh, when you build apps, you need to spend a lot of time tweaking the visual appearance and have an eye for detail. And so hopefully that came through as we were looking at margins and how close things are to their boundaries and how things butt up against each other. Hopefully you got a sense of that. Pay attention to those little details. All right, so we'll pick it back up in the next lesson. We'll see you there. Thank you. Mm -hmm.